The best thing about being a Demon Slayer fan is knowing that when one season wraps up, a new season is gonna be announced, or a movie, and with the Swordsmith Village arc coming to a close, we now obviously have the confirmation that the next arc, which will probably be titled Season 4, is the Hashira Training Arc, and that has been announced. Now, this is a pretty short mini arc, all things considered, and given that people have been rumbling about the Infinity Castle arc and everything, I'm going to assume we're going to have a very small Demon Slayer season sooner than later, and then they'll probably just give us two or three cores for a final, final season, and they probably just don't want you to have to wait two or three years to see it, but that's just my hunch anyway. Way. But either way, confirmed, we're getting more, and we knew it was gonna happen. But I gotta admit, I've never been baited as hard as that fake out death. I seriously, I was convinced, no, they're playing with us. There's no way they're gonna kill our girl. And man, I was believing it. I really was, and it left me shook. Full live reaction to this entire wonderful extra long episode. About 49 minutes, 50 minutes, give or take, before the credits play. Still extra long, just like episode one. So it was a blast to watch. Action, emotion, plot, everything was fantastic. So head on over to the Patreon if you do want to see that full live reaction. Now, this is probably what I'm going to mostly be talking about, is that fake out, because... I was like, no way. There was literally, I was in denial as soon as they were building into it because we knew, all right, Muchiro, Genya, like all of them were pretty, like they're either knocked out, fighting a different demon, or probably couldn't get down that hill unless they wanted to fall face first. And as we saw at one point, Genya was trying to get down there, but was struggling to climb down. So basically, they're, they build into this moment of sacrifice, of we know... Nezuko is a demon, so therefore, the sun rising, it's good on paper because the demon should burn al alive as well, but there's not much you can do in this moment. He tells her to get smaller so he could cover her up, and this is the sun at its weakest, so it's just gonna get stronger and stronger. There was nothing really he could do other than maybe throwing a coat over her, but even then, that wouldn't be enough to really protect her. And what's brilliant about this is every instinct in my body, from all the anime I've seen, everything I've seen from this show, says... Nezuko and Tanjiro would get to the final arc, and that was me building into all this, and just to see her start to burn, and feeling like, okay, but how could they get out of this? Even if he stays behind, can he actually stop the sun from burning her? There's no, like, can he grab her and try to rush her to the woods? It just, it felt impossible, so when she kicks him away, pretty much saying, don't choose me, save people who can actually be saved. And he fully, like, that moment when the flashback starts and you see all the moments of her, that life flashing before your eyes moment, that means death. And I was hoping, I was praying to the Lord's above that power of friendship, do whatever the hell you want to save her because that isn't cool. Because as badass as he was looking with that final strike, I knew as soon as he calmed down, the adrenaline left, he's not going to want to turn around. There's going to be no body. There's going to be no bones. And that's exactly how he was feeling. So when they were building into someone walking, I mean, obviously you think it's got to be her, but I was in denial. I was like, there's no way. And when you see her almost look human again, almost look normal, and she starts talking, I'm thinking... Are you telling me this whole damn time, maybe if we just let her get a little crispy in the sun, we could have had this moment? But doesn't matter. The fact that this story has started with a brother's desire to save his sister, to the point where he literally thought he had to abandon that goal to save other people because there was nothing he could do for her, to then see her seem so normal, like, her speech isn't perfect, she was able to say a few things and seemingly was quite happy, and yeah... The teeth are there, the eyes still look demonic, but she's looked a lot more human. She was able to conquer the sun. And the fact that this, you killed two uppers. The previous season, he was pissed off with one upper gone. Muzin, he doesn't even want to replace the uppers because he's found what he's been looking for this whole damn time. A demon that can conquer the sun. If he eats Nezuko, then therefore he can no longer have be Michael Jackson in the shadows. He can be a on the street in broad daylight. Like, this is insane. They give you such hope that even though she's not cured, at the same time, it just makes it make so much sense because obviously any time the sun's been around, they've pushed her away from it. If she started to get a little crispy, of course, they're not going to let her burn to a crisp because who would sacrifice his sister like that after everything he's been through? But in a moment of selflessness and sacrificing yourself for others, 
we got to see that the sun wasn't actually her biggest threat after all. It was Muzin wanting to actually eat her. And honestly, man, the amount of excitement, pain, my heart was hurting. I was literally having chest pains in the middle portion of all that. It was fantastic. And I thought I would be a little salty that we didn't get more of our girl's fight, but it makes sense because obviously like if you kill the main body, then the other one's gonna go away. I just figured we'd see more building into it. But given the emotion, given what we saw from Tanjiro and everyone, I'm okay with it. Though if we would have had an extra five or 10 minutes with her fighting, would I have enjoyed that? Of course. But in general, it just felt well paced. I love how both the first episode and the last episode of the season, they used that extra runtime to really show us top to bottom. Why is this demon with almost like a split personality like this? And then we see how he was in his life saying, these hands can never do it. I'm blind. I'd never hurt. I'd never steal. And obviously we see what type of person and kind of life he lived. Almost kind of felt like he had a split personality disorder or just really decided to lie far too much to the point of believing said lies. Muzin, honestly, he got, he screwed himself over the fact that this doctor that was trying to help him this whole time, he ends up using the little strength he has to kill the doctor and then realizes the, that the doctor in his research was working and now he's been screwed for centuries trying to figure out the way to finish the whole idea of kind of immortality but not being limited to just the darkness. It's just these moments just felt so good and to see her come in and just hug everyone because I was convinced at least Genya would die. That from near the beginning of this arc I felt like Genya had a death flag and the fact that when you rewind to the Mugen Train and the fact that a demon ran away and we lost such an important character to then have the red light districts yeah, we wounded a boy, but at the very least, we succeeded. And then to end the Swordsmith Village arc with him being able to get a celebration, have everyone hug and say, not only is my sister way more human now, everyone survived and we killed two uppers. That is a high that they're not going to come down from anytime soon. And while there's definitely some funny moments, our Swordsmith saying, don't give him that blade, it's not ready yet. Assuming he broke the blade again, being a bit of a tsundere, saying, don't worry, I'll repair it. Emotional, funny, the animation popped off, the music, like the initial, like it felt like an organ piano piece or something, just like building in, chasing Stuart Little, and just like the music across the board was just impactful. The animation was tasteful. It just was a perfect episode for me. Like the only way this episode could be any better was if it was even longer because I just didn't want to put the episode down. But after so much sacrifice, after so much loss and defeat and feeling like this is an impossible situation, they did the appropriate thing. They made Muzin's mindset, his character, all the more frightening, but made us feel like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's enter the final arc, baby. Let's go after and see what happens. But with that said, we can't have all these characters live and do the same thing over and over. Like, we've been having it too good, all things considered, for these characters. So I think, yeah, there is definitely going to be sacrifice. I don't know who because I, I couldn't predict this arc. But either way, there is going to be loss. There is going to be sacrifice. But damn if this isn't a beautiful way to end Demon Slayer Season 3, the Swordsmith Village arc. Let me know what you thought down below about this wonderful episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Ring that bell so you can get notified when upload more videos on the channel and of course as i mentioned full live reaction to this insane episode is available on my patreon and while you're there you can also get a video shout out so today we have sweet ray 21 taco tuesday crystal plays and matthew bremer so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one